Heather O'Rourke was the Poltergeist franchise. From one, two, and three, she drove people to the theater in droves. Heather O'Rourke being cast as Carol Ann is an example of perfect casting. She embodies everything a little kid should be. Her sister Tammy was dancing and singing on Pennies from Heaven. And I was able to bring Heather to the set because I had no one to take care of her at home. Steven Spielberg came up to us and talked to her and said, can you read? She said, yeah, I can read. He made her scream and scream and scream. And she said, started crying and said, I can't do anymore. And that was it. He fell in love with her, he told me. And then she was hired. The original line, they're here, that was the identifying signature of the entire film, more than a ghost, more than anything else. It's just a line that she said, they're here, they're here, they're here, however Stephen wanted her to do it. Poltergeist 3 had two major names attached to it, Tom Skerritt and Nancy Allen, but the star is Heather O'Rourke, and this was her movie. Why? A chubby little miss you have. Heather was absolutely unbelievable. She was a 35-year-old, 11-year-old. I mean, she was just so sophisticated. So does that hurt anymore, Heather? No. She was the ultimate professional and the sweetest. She was so unaffected by her fame. In Poltergeist 3, you could tell that there was something definitely wrong with the appearance of Heather O'Rourke. Her facial features had drastically changed. Her cheeks were puffing out. Her neck was a little more swollen. Something was wrong. Heather was ill from the beginning. We had her going to doctors, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Poltergeist is one of the most enduring horror franchises in the history of Hollywood. There's always days in your life that you'll never forget exactly where you were and exactly what was happening. I will never forget the day that I found out that Heather died. I was in Chicago. We were getting prepared to mount the shooting of the end of the film. And David Wardlow had set up a conference call, and was Heather's agent, and says, I have some really bad news for you guys. Heather passed away this morning. I remember she got up and she was real excited about school. I said, you didn't eat yesterday. You need to eat something before you go to school. So I made her some toast and she touched my hand and her fingers were blue and they were cold. And I said she had to eat a piece of toast and she couldn't swallow. So I called 911 and as we walked out, she said, Mom, I love you. I'm sorry, because she had thrown up. And the paramedics told me, don't turn around. And they did CPR on her. And the next thing I knew, someone said to me, what's your religion preference? And I kind of looked at them, oh, what are you talking about? They said, didn't you know they did CPR on her? And I said, well, you need a lifeline or the children's hospital then. And I said, I hear they're the best. So that's what they did. And then I lost her. It was devastating. It was, I mean, I love this little girl. Tonight there's a new explanation of the sudden death of Heather O'Rourke. Earlier it was said that 12-year-old star of the Poltergeist films died of flu complications. But now a San Diego hospital says she died during surgery for an intestinal infection. Her manager says the reason she died may be related to an illness she suffered during recent Poltergeist filming. What I did find out was there was an x-ray that had been done when she was first diagnosed, and that was misread. She had been taking cortisone. The intestine had been growing more than her body would accept. It started to leak. And so um, she died of septic shocks because all the septic had gone into all of her organs. She was the second star of the original Poltergeist to die tragically. Dominique Dunn, who played her older sister, was murdered by her boyfriend back in 1982. When you're dealing with one death after another death, it's not a coincidence. There is something more to it, and I believe it's that curse. 
When Heather O'Rourke died, I believe there was a connection to the curse because when you have a curse, if you have some kind of medical ailment, things are going to become worse. The tabloids were pursuing me because they wanted to go after the curse of poltergeist. And in the immediate moment, there was no way I wanted to talk about any of that. I didn't want to be part of it. I remember standing there at the graveside, holding the casket, and looking up at all the paparazzi trying to climb over the fences on balconies and high rises that surround that cemetery in Westwood and shooting, popping off pictures, and I just hated them. In Hollywood, there is a saying, Money is the root of all evil, and if there's money to be made, Hollywood's going to go after it. After the funeral, we had a film with 17 pages left to shoot. I just didn't want it to go on. We didn't want to release a film with a dead 12-year-old in it. But the powers that be at MGM, the people that control the buck, said, if you guys don't finish it, we'll get somebody else to finish it. So we all kind of huddled together and said, okay, let's just finish it. I gotta say, shooting that end scene with a double of Heather was difficult. To this day, I'm upset that we ever released Poltergeist 3. When they went to release it, I went to the theater, and I think the hard thing for me was somebody said, oh, look how fat that girl is. <laughs> it was the hardest thing for me not to go down and hit him. Because <laughs> I thought, that's my baby you're talking about, and she's passed away. It wasn't fair. It just, it was wrong. You know, we talk about the supernatural, that somebody maybe has a premonition. Well, right before Christmas, she was trying to tell me how to use her new camera and video. And I said, what for, Heather? Well, in case I'm not here someday. And you know, to me, still in the back of mind, that bothers me. 